in today's, uh, I was going to call it Friday Feelings, but I don't really like the whole feelings thing. So let's call it Fun Fact Friday. Um, we were chatting in a Facebook thread on Mark Schaefer's Facebook wall uh, about data. Eric Deckers had raised a point that I had said in a keynote talk that we create 30 zettabytes of data, which is uh, a stat from Cisco and IDC, I believe, from 2017, but it dates back to 2015, and it's already out of date. And uh, someone asked, well, just how big is a zettabyte? And it's really difficult to get your head around that. Um, a Netflix video is about 30 minutes, right? You say a, a single show on Netflix, 30 minutes, that's about a gigabyte of data. If you were to start watching the world's longest binge watch, um, in the Eocene era, when the first modern mammals emerged uh, and evolved uh, 57 million years ago, and you binge watch Netflix all that time, you would just now get around to using one zettabyte, right? So that's that is a lot of um, of data. And this year we cranked out, I think around 30 was the the forecast. By 2025, according to Cisco. Uh, forecasted by Cisco, and I believe also IBM, uh, we were expected to crank out uh, uh, 120 zettabytes just from connected devices. So not even all the data, just those things. And it got me thinking, I wanted to look up, uh, Domo has a great, uh, now in its sixth year, visualization called Data Never Sleeps. How much data do we generate every minute? Uh, and there's some fun, fun numbers in here. So, uh, for example, every minute of every day, YouTube users watch 4.3 million videos. That's up from 4.1 million the previous year. So that, that's a tremendous amount of video. If you're watching this at all, thank you, because you clearly could have been watching uh, any one of other 4.3 million videos. Twitter users send 473,000 tweets, which is interesting because that's up from 456,000 the previous year. Meanwhile, 12.9 uh, million texts are sent uh, down from 15.2. Uh, a big chunk of that is because of all of the different messaging applications that are out there. Messenger, WhatsApp, WeChat, Line, Kick, Tango, uh, you name it. There's a billion and a half messaging apps now. And so there is, uh, there's much more choice than just texting. Uh, Instagram users post almost 50,000 photos every 60 seconds, up from 46,000 the previous year. Uh, and Google searches, 3.8 million Google searches per minute, as opposed to 3.6 the previous year. Uh, there is just so much data that is being circulated that we are creating, that we are using, that it is impossible to keep up with. Uh, I think, oh, the last funny stat in there was Netflix. Uh, Netflix users watch 97,000 hours of, uh, ne of Netflix every minute or every day, the equivalent of, um, whereas the previous year was 69,000 hours. Um, the other thing that was interesting was that there are 3.8 million, th sorry, 3.8 billion people on the Internet. And as of 2012, when this series got started, uh, it was 2.5. So we've added almost a, a billion and a half, about 1.3 billion people to the Internet in just six years. That is a stunning number. Anyone, the, I would assume they're really, really out of touch, but anyone who says that the Internet is still fat is clearly uh, not, not paying attention to the data. But when you think about where all the growth is happening, almost all the growth is in the non-Western world. So uh, if you take, a, take a America, the, uh, North America in particular, and, and Europe out, um, all of the growth is happening in Middle East, Africa, South America, uh, the uh, South Pacific region of the planet. And that's where there's so much more opportunity now. So give some thought to this. When you're talking about your marketing, when you're thinking about your marketing and your digital marketing in particular and where you're spending your time and where you're chasing after customers, have you given thought to what your international audience looks like? Have you given thought to who your international audience is? And are you prepared to do business outside of your home country, wherever, wherever you are, where if you're in the UK, if you're in Russia as you're watching this, um, if you're in South Africa watching this, I would assume that if you 
if you don't speak English as a first language and probably not as a second language, you're probably not watching this video. Although I actually learned back in my podcasting days that uh, people in non-English speaking lang language regions love YouTube videos and podcasts because it's a way for them to learn English easily from native speakers. You can hear someone uh, like I have a, uh, for some strange reason, I have a, a central Ohio accent, um, which is basically the, the, the absence of a, of a discernible accent. Um, but yeah, people watch YouTube videos and podcasts to learn how native spe speakers of that of those languages speak. I've I've done the same thing. I watch uh, I've watched uh, and, and listened to it really interestingly um, Ukrainian and Russian uh, videos and, and to hear how those different accents sound. So that even if I don't recognize the language, um, I will know just the tonality of the the words, how the words sound in general, to be able to to hear that and tell the difference between someone speaking Russian, for example, and someone say speaking Latvian. There's there are very clear differences, but you have to listen to the videos. So, um, but yeah, there's from from a marketing perspective of these people watching 4.3 million videos per second. Where are they coming from? Where are your audience members coming from and when you look at it was you can go inside google analytics and you go into the audience menu on the left hand side and you click on geography uh, does behavior geography um what countries are you getting visitors from it's probably not just your home country wherever your home country is it's probably not just there i live in america um and 20 ish percent of my blog traffic is from outside of america uh, now, like, I think 11% is from Canada and 7% is from the UK. So it's still very English-centric uh, regions. But there's uh, India is on the list after that, and then Germany. Now, unlike David Hasselhoff, I am not huge in Germany. So there are people there watching and reading the content. And there might be a market opportunity there. Might be. I don't know. But there, there's clearly already at least one person. Um, and so look in your own data. Where are you getting traffic from? Where are you getting visitors from? Look on your YouTube data. If you're posting videos on YouTube, YouTube has some of the best analytics for any video, uh, any rich media platform, right? Podcasting analytics are horrible by comparison. Um, look at your YouTube videos. Where are your audiences coming from? Where are they watching from? Who watches longer? Does it the people in your home country or people outside your home country? Take a look and see if you can come up with some of your own fun facts uh, on this uh, on this Friday. So, as always, thanks for watching. Leave comments in the comments. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Want help solving your company's data, analytics, and digital marketing problems? Visit TrustInsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.